Installing casters, a.k.a. wheels, on a pre-built steel workbench. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the founder of Hovey's Knives of China. And here's some work we did to get our shop ready for production. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And this scene of mass confusion on the shop floor represents our attempt at putting some wheels on our steel workbench here. Well, this workbench now weighs several hundred pounds. And we are going to be doing some other modifications about the shop. And it is convenient to have at several hundred pounds it did not want to move. So consequently, we're putting some wheels on it. Our problem was that this was a piece of salvage material to start with, and it had been out in the weeds, literally, for 10 years or so. And the bottom of the metal was just about rusted away, as you can see. Uh, consequently, it would not weld very satisfactorily to here. Plus, uh, welding this old, very much rusted metal was not too good not too good anyway, so that wasn't really a very satisfactory answer. So what we did was take a 2x4 here, a good piece of pine, looks all ready, but it's okay, and then we bolted and screwed this and inlet a rectangular hole through the pine. So now this has about, oh, a little over an inch and a quarter of wood on it on this side, similarly on the other, and it further braces this entire structure across the bottom. So it makes the table stronger than it was. Plus, now that we have locking casters on it, uh, we can move it around the shop material on and still work with the vise and grinders, etc., etc., that we're going to put on it. So this is an improvement in the art. So if you have an old <laughs> and you really need to put some wheels under it, well, this is one here, and we use a little jack right here, jack it up, and put blocks under it from time to time to do what we need to do. Now we inlet both legs and then put them on at the same time. And with these bolts and screws, no, that attachment's not going to go anywhere. And added a little shoe goo to it just to aid for the fit, as well as add a little extra strength, although it's not needed. We've got bolts and screws through here, too. So I'll show you how we actually inlet the 2x4s for the legs. We're using our now familiar harbor freight workbench here and uh, we are going to chisel out this first with this little saw attachment on our drill and then clean it up with a chisel Using the jigsaw, we made several radius cuts, as you see, around through the area. So this makes it very easy to remove this wood compared to just chiseling it out straight, which you could, of course, do in the traditional manner. But you want to make sure you get far enough out that your leg trisection that we've already cut off here will actually pass through the work. Without splintering this off.
Well, we've got things started to being squared around. I'm just doing a little trial here and see how we're doing. Uh, generally speaking, we've got clearance this way and we're tight this way, so we need to open up both of these walls a little bit there. We're almost to the point now of being able to get a drive-through fit. I can see the areas where it's hanging up. Now let's see. through the work so yeah we've done the job now good we happen to have a couple of screws and some lag bolts so that's what we're going to sight our holes for and since we have relatively less wood here we're going to put these smaller screws on this side and now we'll change out the bits and uh, put in for the lag screws. We've got our lag bolt here and one of these over here and so this one's going in and this set of wheels ain't going nowhere guys. There we go, that one's in there. Yep, that is pretty solid. Now for this one, get it started good. And just do the next one in a similar fashion. A few strokes with a hacksaw and that takes things off. Okay, and that one is done. To raise the top of the table, what we've done is we have used a jack and a 4x4 as a column with a piece of 2x4 on top there at the back center of the table. And so we're able to elevate the table uh, approximately 4 inches. So Paul will be able to get the oxyacetylene torch under it and actually cut the wood. And that way we'll be able to get our 2x4 with wheels under it and lower the table down on top of it. Well, we now have our mobile workbench on wheels. Not quite ready for the Le Mans, but it will get us around the shop just fine. For now, this is Hobie Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Uh, this is the logo of our new company. And here are some of the 15 different patterns of knives based on ancient designs from China and elsewhere that we will be making. Uh, this is one of my outdoor books, Backyard Deer Hunting, and I have others like Extreme Muzzle Loading, Practical Bow Fishing, and Crossbow Hunting, which are very complete treatments of their subject materials. Now, putting wheels on this heavy steel workbench while it was actually loaded with tools enables us to move it around the shop, put more people around it at the same time, and generally improve the situation. For info on Hobie's Knives of China, you can go to the website below. For info on my books, blogs, and videos, you can go to my website. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.